<laughs> I just set up Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to control the camera remotely with my phone. Why did the monitor display just go off? I don't want you off. Well, because I'm monitoring it with my phone. <laughs> ah, technology, my God. How did we live without it before? I'm up in the loft, and I'm wanting to record myself talking to the camera while I'm sitting at my jigsaw puzzle table. And I don't want to have to get up. I don't want to trouble myself with getting up to go over 10 feet away to turn the camera on and off. I'd like to be able to sit there and not exercise myself too, too much by getting up. So now I can sit there and just push the little icon on the bottom right of the phone, which I did a few seconds ago, and it began to record. I shouldn't be so surprised by this technology, but it sure is fun to use. Can you see me now? Looks like you can. Should I zoom in more? How's the audio? This isn't telling me. Piece of crap. <laughs> you know, I've along the way of having this new camera, I came across a, a discussion about this app, Panasonic Image app. Some of the users of it were complaining about this and about that and how it was hard to set up and it was it was no good, a waste. What do they want? I had no trouble setting this thing up and I was reading the instruction manual, it's online, and between the camera and the, the, the app they were communicating beautifully, telling me what to do next, where to go. Go turn on the Wi-Fi on your phone. Go into the phone Wi-Fi and make sure that you select this new Wi-Fi device, the phone app. Bingo, okay. Go back and look at the, the back of the camera, telling me what more to do from there. And between them, it was up and running in a minute and a half. People just have to complain. I don't ever complain about anything. The weather even. I don't know. So here we go. Well, I think I'm going to zoom in just now. Nah, maybe I'm not. I think you can hear me fine. This isn't a complaint. I've got a fresh new wood tick bite on the, my lower calf about that far from my ankle. You need to know these specific detailed details. It's important in the scheme of life. Sitting watching TV last night, I felt a, just a little tiny itch down there. And I reached down and rubbed it with my fingertips and it felt like a, a scab. Okay, how did I get a scab there? But, uh-uh, is it? Is it? And I pulled up my pants leg. Yeah, it's a tick. It's a wood tick, not a deer tick thing. God. Well, and I reached down and twisted him off, which I've now read. You twist them off. That unhooks their pincers rather than just pull them off. You don't want to pull them off because it'll take a chunk of skin with it. Okay. He was not engorged. He hadn't been there more than 30 seconds. And just previously, I had been out in the yard with Suki for our evening pee and loving her up. And so I was unprotected. I didn't have my, my work clothes on. I was in, in relax mode for the evening. I think walking around in the grass out there, he got on the shoe, crawled up my sock and onto my leg, and he said, ooh, skin, bite it now. They don't have to be attached very long. And I know as I'm pulling them off, I'm in for a week to ten days of orgasmic level itch. And so i got to keep my fingertips off it, my fingernails off it, and use cortisone repeatedly and often and copiously. Suki and I are inside today. And yesterday I made the mistake of thinking, ah, we can walk out to the mailbox early afternoon. Deer flies don't seem to be active. That's for me out on the deck. We got 50 yards down the driveway. Oh my God, it 
the, the deer flies descended on us. Suki needs the walk, but she is just surrounded by literally dozens of deer flies. Open the mailbox and I've got a new phone book. Who the hell cares about phone books now? Why do they keep... I get two different ones once a year. Who cares? Who, who uses a phone book anymore? I carry the phone book back using it as a fan. To, and I didn't have a camera with me. I wanted to get a picture of her, video of her, with this swirl of mayhem around her head. So, combination of the heat and the deer flies, we are inside today. And I decided, well, this jigsaw puzzle's been set up for three months. I go, I go weeks without working on it. I got other things I'd rather be doing. I decided to day inside. I can knock off the wipe on the bog episode 101 at noon and work on the puzzle. Earlier this morning, I was uh, giving her, rubbing her head and her ears. I felt a little lump on the inside of her ear. Oh, what's that? But I got it off of there and on my finger, well, it was alive. Uh oh, so I killed it, went back to doing that, and I was looking at her eye, at her eyebrow. Oh, there's another one. Pick that off. It's alive. No, they shouldn't be alive. And then I, I looked, and she's due for a, a new dose of her Brevecto tick medication last three years. When I look back at the record to see when I had gotten it, it was in mid-March. Oh, I was thinking it was mid to late April. No, nope. I'll say March 15th, April, May, June. She's overdue. So I called a vet and I, I've got some I got to pick up this afternoon. I haven't picked a live tick off of her, at least it was attached since I began giving her the first dose back in, in March. That stuff works fast and it works well. Wow. That's my independent girl. As much as I can call her from up here, I just heard her get down from the love seat. Okay, now's my chance. So I, come on. Come on, Zuki. No, I heard her plop down on the floor, which is far superior than being up here with her loved one. I'm offended, deeply offended by that. I always have been. What started it was way early on. I'd be loving her up, and she'd break it off, back away and shake herself. Shaking me off. All right, fine. <laughs> that was seriously offensive, and I've learned not to be offended by that. I just spent the last 15 minutes trying to get this damn phone talking to the camera. We are in the loft, as you probably figured out, because it's hotter than Hades outside again today. It's hotter than it was yesterday. And I really feel for the people in the Northwest, in the Portland, Seattle area, enduring 115 degrees when that's supposed to be a rainy cool part of the country it's not like that's uh arizona 
and I go outside now. After we've had some low 80 days. Yesterday it was the high 80s. Now today we're up at 95 already. Now I say already. It's a little before 3. And I had all the doors and windows open last night to make sure this place cooled off from what it was 78 when I went to bed. Got up this morning it was 62 outside. 66 inside. I left the doors and windows open as long as I could to get it as cool in the house before I closed everything up. But now, I mean, and it's it's so gorgeous. The cool of the day. I love that phrase because I I can relate to it. And I know a lot of people can. It's a sublimely gentle, cool, fresh, new day. And as the morning advances, oh, okay, we're up to 72 now. It's 72 inside. Well, I better close things up. And you do, and you forget about it. You look an hour later, oh, man, it's already 80. I've been reading an article in, in Harper's. This one's on loneliness and what has come out of the pandemic and the loneliness of people and how we need touch, physical touch, like hugging. And even to the extent she mentioned an episode where a young man brushed against her arm with just his shirt, just the fabric of his shirt, and it was, was meaningful. How much is going on that we don't understand? And when somebody like her begins to research and discover the impacts that we are having from the COVID pandemic and how we're reevaluating everything. One of the big ones is, is work. And the people who have been working from home, first of all, not having to go into the office, and they're discovering, wow, I am so much more productive being able to be at home and working quietly without distractions. And then there's the other folks who need that interaction between fellow workers, the synergy of sharing ideas. And like, I love the saying, one plus one equals three in many cases, just like that, where you, you get provoked. That's usually a bad word. It's not a bad word here. You get synergized into ideas and new directions, new ways of thinking outside a box that you wouldn't have being alone. And there's the other side to work, how many people in the hospitality industry are reevaluating if that's what they really want to do. It's not just the hospitality industry, it's people that have been unemployed for a long while and they're beginning to say, I don't want to do that anymore. That's not me. That's, that's meaningless. That's not... And so they're exploring other ways to get an income, for one, but mainly to bring fulfillment and meaning and satisfaction to life. I had to think about myself on this loneliness thing. I haven't felt lonely. I, I do once very rarely. I wish I had somebody to talk to, bounce ideas off of, but for the most part, I'm perfectly content being alone. That's where I get recharged. That's how I get recharged. Unlike uh, extroverts, they need to be around other people to get recharging. I'm off on a tangent here, aren't I? I'll halt for a minute. Not a single deer fly yet. It's about 68, 69 degrees. Very humid. Balmy. I think we had about a quarter of an inch of rain. Came around 3 o'clock this morning. I woke up to lightning flashes and then a little bit of thunder and oh okay 
I had seen that there was a possibility when I went to bed last night. There was a system in the far northwest. It looked like it dissipated mostly by the time it got here. But it did not. It lasted about 20 minutes. Some great flashes of lightning. Good booms. Hold on. Got it. Oops. And a nice treat for you. <laughs> An after breakfast snack. She loves doing this now. She knows that she's protected between my legs. <laughs> oh, sweetie. Yeah. How are the flowers doing? Every time I look at them, it seems like they're fuller and more robust. Ah, oh, there's a frog. Yeah. Excellent. Finally, hey, he's hiding under the deck. If he's going to wait for me to know. Nope. Good deal. We got a frog. Oh. I've been deadheading these about every other day. And that's why they're so full. My God. A little bit of, of learning how to do that. A couple of bunny rabbits running around here this morning. I've seen them for the last week or two. Seen only one at a time. Now this morning I saw two gambling around the yard. G-A-M-B-O-L-I-N-G. It's nice to see. And they're hiding out in the, near the bog to the north of Appaloosa Terrace. I think that's Eagle. Deer flies haven't gone away yet. It's nuts. Go on, Suki. A little different than it was earlier this morning. Deer flies are alive and lively again. She's got five of them on her head. Jesus. Just ambling along. It's 90 degrees. Tomorrow's the big day. <clears throat> the big rain day. It's not going to be a high in the 80s. It's not going to be a high in the 70s. It's going to be a high in the 60s. It's going to get down to like 65 overnight and then not go up any during the day because we got, as they're saying, big rain coming. An all-day soaker. And they're, they're mentioning northern Minnesota specifically as having the most chance of getting this significant rain. I'm like a little kid. I've been always like a little kid, I guess I say that. But I'm excited. I'm really excited because if we get that sort of rain, that's going to help tremendously. And it looks like the following few days, four or five days, the rain chance is up around 50%. So maybe it's going to open a, a spigot or a trend of rain. Maybe we'll get back to normal. I was, I've been looking at... Uh, 
drone footage from the past 2018, 19, 20, 21. And in the fall of 2018, Otter Pond was almost gone. It was just a little puddle in the middle of this vast bog. I hadn't really paid attention to it. I a little bit I did that droning of it, but it didn't occur to me that this is very unusual. That was very unusual. And then spring or summer and summer of 2019 it was the level was way up, well as you've seen. But that lasted all summer. And the amount of rain that we got, I thought, well that's also that's normal. I'm looking forward to rain. A day of rain. I'm sort of hanging out here in the shade. <laughs> it's, uh, when we came out here uh, 15 minutes ago, that was hot. A hot walk. Oh, look at the look at the thistle. I don't. Well, this one might get large enough to blossom out. If we get rain, 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 I can hope. I have to remember to go down to Otter Pond after her supper. I want to get a photo of... I haven't been down there for two or three days. There's a Suki treat. Yeah, I want to get a photo of Otter Pond. and I want to see how low it is compared to the last time I saw it three or four days ago. I got to get this mess out of here. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to burn some of the brush pile that's back there waiting and waiting and waiting for me to burn it. Oh man. Look how low the water's gotten. What made that? Well, it looks like... Yeah, you can see the inlet. I'm not going to walk out there. But that's where the muskrat goes in and out. Yes, I am going to go look. Well, this has gotten very low, huh? See what it looks like tomorrow. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm realizing that water level was way up here four days ago. Because that's where the dragonflies were dipping and flying all around out here over the water. So that's a good inch and a half to two inches in vertical level fall. And there are mosquitoes out here. How can there be mosquitoes during a drought? All right, I'm getting out of here. Getting eaten. I'm getting sucked dry. They already got me on the side of my hand, underside of my wrist. Little beasts. End of my finger. I'm suffering more than I realized. Oh, God, it's hot. Last night, around 8.30, the temperature outside was still <clears throat> too warm to open up the house. The house is 79. Finally at 9 I said all right I just I gotta open up. It was 80 outside and 80 inside. All right open everything up. Did had the fan running on me in the in the living room. It was sweltering. Went to bed 
and I had the fan running and I thought what do people do that don't have a fan because the air movement cools the sweat on your body. I mean, everybody knows that, but there are people that don't have fans in the situation I was in last night. How do they sleep with no air movement? I think that it's going to be the same thing tonight until we can get the outside temperature down into the 60s sometime during the night. Last night I sat here talking with my friend John from Wisconsin, and I was not moving any more than I'm moving right now. I guess this doesn't really count, although that could work up a sweat, but I was out here for 20 minutes to half an hour, thinking, if I don't move and I'm outside when it's 92 degrees, I'll be all right. No, I finally got to the point I was overheated. I had to get in the house, into the relative cool of the house. I am ready to throw this strap away. This is the one that came with the camera. And it has, I don't know if this is going to, you're going to see that. These little squared off parts right up here on both sides. And they catch on absolutely everything. And that's the worst thing you can have with a camera is something that catches. You're not expecting it and it catches on something and the camera leaves your hands. You're not holding on to it like the death grip because you don't have to. I've looked into a new strap, $30, $50, and I looked into replacing this one that came with the camera with a dom key. That's the manufacturer of camera bags and camera haulage equipment. I bought a Domke strap, very well made, you know, woven, and it's lasted me all these years. Well, I looked into getting one of those for this camera, and I read the reviews, and oh, Jesus, it's just so typical. They've cheapened up the, the fabric, they've cheapened up, cheapened up the f fasteners. Don't buy it. Oh, my God, how, how do they do this? Why do they do that? Well, I know why. It's economics. But in this case, economics is churning against them. I'm not going to buy anything from them. So they think cheapening up their product in order to increase their profits doesn't work in a lot of cases because people like me will say, no, I'm not going to buy an inferior cheapened product like that.